Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to finally start coding. First, we'll configure the Azure provider, and then we'll run a Terraform init to initialize Terraform and get it ready to deploy our Azure resources. So let's get started. All right, so here I am in my editor here. First thing I'm going to do is just create a new file, and we're going to call that main.tf just like so. Go ahead and open that. And now I'm just going to pull that out of the way and let's take a look at the Azure Docs. Now, as you can see here, we've got our Azure provider and what this provider does is allows Terraform to communicate with the Azure API. That's how Terraform knows how to deploy resources. So as you can see, if you look down, you'll see authenticating to Azure. And the way we're doing it is with the Azure CLI. Of course, you can feel free to read these other options here. Those may work better for your organization, but for us, the Azure CLI works perfectly fine. So this is our configuration that we're going to use for the provider. There's some more stuff down here. We'll get into that very soon, but we're going to start here. Now, as you can see, we've got Terraform and then we've got required providers. So any of the providers we're going to use are specified in this block. So we've got the Azure RM provider, the source here is HashiCorp Azure RM, and then we've got a version. Now this is actually freezing this version to 2.97.0. Your version may be different and that's perfectly fine. Of course, if something does break, you can always revert to this version and please let me know so that I can update the course. Now below that, we then actually specify the provider. Up here is indicating which providers we'll be using within Terraform, and then here is actually how we will do the connection and specify any other options that we may want to specify. Now, as you can see, if you scroll down, we've got all of these arguments and one of them is features, which is required. So even if we don't use anything within the features block because it's required, we still need to include it. As you can see here, it's included with an open set of curly braces. So basically it's an empty map. So as you can see, there are lots of other options that you can use. Feel free to peruse that. But let's go ahead and get coding. Now you can just copy and paste that in. I'm just going to type it out just to get a little practice going. So we're going to start with a Terraform block, open and close some braces, required providers, open and close some braces again. Azure RM is our provider. And then let's provide the source, which equals HashiCorp slash Azure RM. And then version equals, again, in my case, 2.91.0. Now you don't necessarily need to specify this, but it's a good way to ensure that the code always works. So after that, we just provide that configuration block, provider, Azure RM, and that open features block there. So this is all we need here. And of course you can provide more providers. You can even provide two Azure providers if you want. You'll just need to name them differently. And that's how you can potentially use different accounts or different regions or something like that. But in this case, we're going to keep it simple. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and run a First, we'll run a Terraform FMT, and that stands for Terraform Format. And as you can see, that kind of cleaned up our code a little bit, removed some indentations, things like that. So it's a good habit to run Terraform Format anytime you are working with any type of files, especially before you commit to your repositories. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go to the next step, and that is a Terraform init, just like so. As you can see, we're initializing the back end, and the back end is a local back end, which means that our Terraform state where everything is stored will be stored here. All right, everything is successfully initialized. Let's take a look at what we've got. We've got the .terraform directory here. This is actually where the provider is stored, and this is a compiled file. So this is actually a compiled Go file or in Windows case, an EXE file, as you can see, and that is what is used to communicate with the API of Azure. 
And then what we have is our terraform lock.hcl. And as you can see, this can constrain the version that we use. You typically want to commit this to your repository. So even if this version isn't set, this lock.hcl will maintain that version to ensure that your code always runs. Now, if you decide to upgrade that provider, you may want to just delete this file or modify the version. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you were paying attention, you may have noticed I accidentally left an S off the end of features. So I want to illustrate a point here. Terraform init is not interested in anything else except for provider related stuff. So basically I could put whatever I want to down here. And if I run a Terraform init, it has no problems whatsoever. But if I change the provider and accidentally use the wrong provider name or a wrong resource name, which we will look into, it will fail. So do keep that in mind. Init is not sufficient to test your code. You will need to run a plan, which we will cover soon. So let's go ahead and add that S just like so. Save your file. Go ahead and mark this lesson complete. Come on back to the next one and let's actually start building some things.